Next topic to look at when we're exploring uh, functions of several variables is to talk about what it means to be a derivative of a function of several variables. And so we'll start off with a idea called partial derivatives. So again, starting off with a comparison to intro uh, to what we understand as seen before in single variable calculus. So for a single variable function, the derivative represents the slope of the tangent line to the function at a point. So imagine standing on the graph at the point, the derivative represents the rate of change uh, in the direction you are walking as x is increasing, you know, rate of change as our inputs increase. So now what could this mean on a surface which has kind of, instead of just one direction to walk and in, in two dimensions, I only have really kind of two possible directions to walk. And so that we all are speaking the same language in math, we decide that we're gonna, we're gonna talk about the increasing direction of inputs. But how do you define an increasing direction of inputs here? You could say, well, X's are increasing in this direction, Y's are increasing in this direction. Everybody's kind of increasing in this direction. Somebody's increasing over here, but not everybody. So there's a little bit of an ambiguity here. So uh, what does it mean when we're talking about a derivative? when you have an infinite number of directions you can walk in. Well, as we're gonna see in coming sections is, it kind of means that there are an infinite number of derivatives you can take at any particular input input point uh, for a surface. You can think about the, the slope of the tangent line to the surface in that particular direction of travel. So as you can kind of see below here, we've got a little vector u, uh, two comma three, and that, that corresponds to a well, sorry, let me say that again. We've got a point two comma three in the input field, uh, input coordinate plane for this surface, and then the related point up on the surface. And then we have a tangent line in the direction of a vector u from that. And so the derivative is gonna be the slope of that tangent line in that direction. But as you can kind of see, you know, we could make another der derivative here and then Oh, I don't know, another one off this direction. And then maybe we'd have, so you could have a whole bunch of tangent lines through there. It's gonna kind of have an infinite number of derivatives. So that's what we're kind of building towards. So a different derivative in any direction you wish to walk. And so we call this a directional derivative, but that's foreshadowing and kind of uh, spoiling something that we'll see later. Again, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So. Slowing it back down. Before we're ready to tackle directional derivatives, the first we have to introduce a new concept, the idea of a partial derivative. And so what, a, what is a partial derivative? That is the idea that we're gonna treat all other variables as a constant and differentiate with respect to only one variable. So if we were on the left of the screen here, if we were to fix y as a constant value, not let it vary, um, then we would get this kind of shaded plane, you know, you would, you would cross section this surface with the plane for y being that fixed value, then you could differentiate with respect to x. And we would, there's no ambiguity there because we're gonna agree as we did before that when we're talking about the derivative with only respect to x fixing y, we're gonna talk about the derivative with respect to x in the increasing direction there. So if we were to think about the, the slope of the tangent line that's shown here, we would see that this thing is probably gonna have a negative derivative because if you think about traveling in the direction of increase of the X input, that's a, that's a decreasing slope line. Okay, now you can also do the same thing over here to the right. You can fix X to be a constant value and that will result in the, the slice shown there. And you can have yourself a derivative with respect to Y. And again, with respect to Y, we're gonna think about them and the increasing direction. So that'll be the slope of that tangent line with respect to y as y is an increasing input. So before we start, notation is gonna become very, very important here. And I urge you to have a lot, a lot of caution and proceed carefully with this um, because I'm gonna use this notation for well the rest of the course. So in single variable calculus, we got used to dy dx. And, and don't worry if you're used to primes, primes are coming, but uh, it's really gonna be helpful um, if you're familiar with and understand what both notations mean. And what dy dx really means is to differentiate, take the derivative with respect to x, d dx, the function y. Because remember y in single variable calculus, y is equal to f of x. So this is really the same as saying d dx of f of x or df 
dx. So we didn't write that much in single variable calculus, but we'll write that, we're going to use that all the time here in multivariable calculus. Okay, so those, those annotations are going to go away when I advance this slide, but that's okay. So for example, we've got y is equal to 3x squared minus 4x. And so dy dx is take the derivative with respect to x of the function y, and so that's take the derivative of with respect to x of the function 3x squared minus 4x. And then we differentiate as usual. I'm really trying to emphasize the idea here that we can think of this derivative as kind of an operation, a thing that we do to a function. And so you can kind of use like that thinking of that function 3x squared minus 4x as the input and the differentiation is the uh, operation we're gonna apply to it. Uh, so you can think of this, replace the y's with f's. And so as mentioned before, you can write it like that as well. So the point is to think of the differential as an operation you can apply to a function and the variable in the denominator tells us which variable to differentiate with respect to. And that's gonna become important as you can probably see by the fact that we're gonna be doing differentiation with respect to different variables. So before we learn to calculate actual partial derivatives, let's learn to talk about um, notation properly. So in general, we're going to use this sort of curly Q D when we're talking about partial derivatives here. Notice this is different D versus curly D. Um, and I encourage you to, to be careful with the way you write it because keeping track of this is going to be helpful um, throughout you know, this course and others perhaps. So uh, uh, these are the scripts that I've developed. I mean, I, I used to make a D differently, but then I did enough math where I and how I make my d's like this and my partials like that. But yeah, so the point is, it's not the same, um, it's not the same figure. That's, that is actually just called the partial. So um, notationally, uh, ddx, I'm still gonna re uh, read it as del del x. Yeah, let's pause this, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I had a little brain fart there. Um, I said it, but I, I sort of have guessed my second guess myself there that yeah this symbol is actually referred to as a partial symbol and so the way we would read this whole expression would be the partial of f with respect to x uh, and so that's how we're going to refer to it because we'll see later that the word del actually has a whole, totally different meaning but uh, we'll get there so when you're reading these things we don't say the derivative with respect to x but we say the partial with respect to x or the partial derivative with respect to x so that we're being clear and we understand what we're talking about. And so this, uh, this notation, partial with respect to x means take the partial derivative with respect to x of the function f of x, which similar to what we've just been talking about with single variable calculus derivatives can be shortened up as the, uh, the partial of f with respect to x like that. Now, in the same way that some, you know, this is kind of a cumbersome notation, which I'm going to try and convince you can be helpful, um, but that's okay. Most people, once they understand it, I kind of prefer the shorthand of this in the same way that a lot of times people prefer to use the prime notation for traditional variable, single variable derivatives. Um, so the partial with respect to uh, the partial of f with respect to f can be written shorthand here with a subscript notation where we just write um, f with a little subscript of x. And we know that that means the partial derivative with respect to x of the function f. So that's uh, the notation for partials in general. And in calc, multivariable calc, we're gonna have more than one way to express the idea of evaluating a derivative at a given input point. And so, you can start off with uh, the, the leftmost expression here, the partial with respect to x of the function f evaluated at the point x, x naught, y naught. Um, I find that a little, I can actually, if I'm honest, I find that a little bit confusing because you kind of got 
hey, this input's on the inside. And, and I know this is going to sound silly, but kind of our, our intuition with math is work from the inside of the parentheses out. So do I first evaluate f at the point and then take the derivative? Well, no, that would just give me a constant number and the derivative of a constant number would be zero. So they must mean to first take the partial derivative and then evaluate it with at the point. But anyway, I find that one to be a little, a little bit cumbersome. I like this one a little bit better. Uh, okay, so it tells me, hey, take the partial of f with respect to x and then evaluate it at that. But if I'm honest, these two are my favorite. And I'm putting a little star by this one because sometimes, as you'll see in future coming sections, it can get to be a little bit sort of lots and lots of parentheses stacked up and which one means multiplication and which one means evaluate some partial derivative or some, some expression at a point. So I like to use the vertical bar notation because it kind of takes all the ambiguity out of it and says, hey, I mean, take the derivative of f, the partial derivative of f, sorry about that, with respect to x and evaluate that rig at x naught, y naught. Um, and we've been using this notation to evaluate integrals. We just kind of haven't told you that. Um, but when you only have one input written there, you just write it at the bottom and say, hey, take the partial derivative of f with respect to x and evaluate it at the input point x naught, y naught. And you can also write that as using sort of the shorthand script notation as uh, the partial of f with respect to x evaluated at the point x naught, y naught. So those are the two notations I'll use with a heavier emphasis on the uh, yellow highlighted one on the left. All right, so the slide is not shown up. So let me pause this and fix that. All right, glitch fixed. Uh, so we're not done with this slide yet. There's one more bit of information on it. And as before, since, you know, z, whoops, since z is equal to f of x, y, wherever you see an f, you could just replace it with z. So the partial of z with respect to x is the same thing as the partial of f with respect to x. So uh, I have no particular reason for this, but I, I kind of, I don't, I don't love that one as much. I tend to refer to the function by the name f. So if I'm going to use the notation, I tend to do that more, but we'll see an instance uh, where it actually is very, very helpful and can make a little more sense to use that version of the notation. So point of this, be careful with notation. All right, so let's get into the definition of partial derivatives. The definition is that the partial derivative of a function f of x, y equals to z with respect to x. So the partial of f with respect to x written as the partial of f with respect to x or the partial of f with respect to x looks the same, reads, or looks different, reads the same, is, well, just like in single variable calculus, the, the derivative is defined to be a limit. This time we're just working with multiple variables. And so since we're fixing y when we're taking the derivative with respect to x, y is now a constant. So those y values, they're just constant. We don't worry about them. And so that's really very similar to the single variable definition of, um, of the derivative in single variable calculus. If you wanted to make it match, you would just throw out that and say, now all of a sudden we have the derivative of a single variable f of x function equals y. But yeah, so that's the definition. Um, and you can do the similar, similar definition when you're taking the partial with respect to y. In either case, the variable we are not differentiating is with is treated as a constant. So partial derivatives still just represent the slope of the tangent line to our surface in a specific direction or the instantaneous rate of change, if you prefer. But I like to think of it as the geometric interpretation as the slope of the tangent line. So del f, uh, I'm sorry, partial f with respect to x is the slope of the tangent line to the curve at a point in the direction parallel to the x-axis. And the partial with, of f with respect to y is the slope of the tangent line to the curve at a point in the direction parallel to the y-axis. Shown below, we saw those pictures before, but now they have a little bit more meaning to them and we see the notation that they represent as well. And so what's shown is the tangent line at the input point 1, 1, uh, which is going to be related to, ooh, that's a typo. I don't catch that. I stole these figures from a textbook, but really that point should be labeled 1, 1, f of 1, 1, not just f of 1 as it is. Anyway, if you fix the 
if you fix y and take the partial derivative with respect to x, you'll get the slope of the tangent line shown here on the left and similar uh, for the partial with respect to y. Oh, there we go. So let's do some examples. Consider, um, consider f of x, y is equal to the function x squared plus y squared, where we're gonna fix y is equal to one, and we're gonna find the partial derivative with respect to x at the point two comma one, f of two comma one. So in the image off to the left, we see the slice that we would get on this paraboloid if we were to fix y equals to one, the, the plane y equals to one, and only concern ourselves with that kind of slice of our graph. So replacing the y with one, here we get x squared plus one. And if you look at that, you say, hey, that uh, in that particular plane, restricting straight to that plane, that black line shown, sure enough, looks like a x squared plus one, a parabola just in the uh, y equals one plane. So we get ourselves a parabola in space. So what about the derivative at that point? Well, now we have the point plotted on that particular curve. And there is the tangent line to that surface in the direction of that curve. And so the partial derivative calculation is what we do is we differentiate with respect to x and we treat y as a constant. So the partial derivative of f with respect to x is first we can just similar to single variable calculus derivatives, we can sort of break up the derivative across addition and subtraction. We'll, so we'll consider the two terms separately. So the first one, this right here, the uh, partial with respect to x of x squared says take the derivative of x squared. Since we're taking the derivative of x squared with respect to x, we're just going to differentiate as normal. And so x squared has derivative 2x. Drop that exponent down, subtract by 1. And now over here, we're going to take the derivative with respect to x of y squared. Well, y squared we're treating as a constant. So this is, you know, that's no different than taking the derivative of seven. Well, the derivative of seven would be zero, right? So the derivative with respect to x of any expression that is only in terms of y is going to be zero because y is a constant here. And so that's why we have, whoops, that's why we have zero down here. And so simplifying that two x plus zero gives us two x. Okay, so now we know the partial derivative and the partial derivative of f with respect to x outputs the slope in the x direction. So if we're to evaluate this derivative that we have at the point two comma one, well, let's have a little bit of highlighting here, x. Well, the only input here is, is x. And so if we're gonna evaluate it at the point, the input point x equals two, y equals one, we only need to plug in a, the x value of two because we don't have any y expressions. And it's not always the case. There may be y expressions, but for now, just a simple example, um, you know, plug in that two and we get four. And if you look at that dashed blue line off to the left, if you were to kind of rotate that around and look at it square on where we're ignoring the parabola or uh, ignoring the paraboloid and just looking at that black parabola in space and that tangent line, in the direction of, of the plane that's kind of that parabola, that black parabola exists in, um, that sure looks like it has a nice steep slope of four. And in fact, it does. So the slope of the line, what I just kind of said there was the slope of the line parallel to the x-axis that is in the y equals one plane that's tangent to our surface at our given point is four. Okay. So let's do some more examples. On the left, uh, if we have f of x, y, if the function is equal to just the constant number three, then finding the partial with respect to x using the subscript notation, that's the same thing as using the um, differential notation here of partial with respect to x of three. Well, partial with respect to x of three, three is a constant, so we get zero. Derivative of any number is just zero, regardless of what variable you're differentiating with respect to. Now over here on the right, the point of this is to emphasize that when you're differentiating with respect to x, oh, the poor choice of highlighter, let's, let's, let's fix that. When you're differentiating with respect to x, y is going to behave just like a constant. 
It's going to be treated just like a constant. And so the derivative of a constant is zero. All right, let's see, what do we got here? So um, let's look at the left again, kind of trying to build things up here. So this time f is equal to 2x to the third power. And we want to find the partial with respect to x. So we're going to take the partial with respect to x of the expression 2x to the third power. Well, that two just hangs out in front since it's being multiplied. We know from single variable calculus that a number, a coefficient being multiplied out in front of an expression just hangs out. And then we take the, the derivative of just that expression to get the derivative of x third, x to the third is three x squared. And then you algebra it all together and you get six x. We could also go ahead and say, hey, um, properties of differentiation allow us to pull that two outside and then we're just differentiating an x expression with respect to x, and we get 2 dot 3x squared, just as shown above. So now let's do the thing on the right. The thing on the right, all I've changed is instead of 2 as my constant, now I'm multiplying x to the third power times y. But again, when we're taking the derivative with respect to x, we just treat every y as if it's a constant. Now, this is a constant being multiplied by an x expression. And so, Again, perhaps we could you know, pop that y out front. It's no different than popping that two out in front and then taking the derivative of just the remaining expression with respect to x. And now this only works when you're multiplying, right? If it's uh, x to the third plus y or you had x to the third plus two, you wouldn't put top the two out. You'd take the derivative of them independently. Okay, so when we do that, we see that we get y times the derivative, uh, the partial with respect to x, the partial derivative of x to the third, which is three x squared just as we see up here. Tidying that all up, just because I kind of like my numbers out in front, we get 3y x to the second power. All right, now kind of putting all of this together, we could take the derivative of both of those express or a different expression. Um, well, type, typo, let me, let me fix the typo before I move on. The typo is that I omitted a y right here in the original expression. So f is, 2x to the third power plus y e to the set 2x power. So now we're going to take the partial of this with respect to x. So I'm going to take the partial of that entire expression, and I'm going to break it up across the addition to be taking the partial of the individual terms. Uh, the partial of, of with respect to x of 2x to the third is 6x squared, as we saw in the last slide. And now here's a little bit different. We've got the partial derivative of y with respect, uh, the partial derivative of x with the, of, I'm gonna, forgive me, let me start that again. The second term, we're gonna take the partial derivative with respect to x of y times e raised to the two x power. So down here, we could say, all right, that y is as good as a constant. And I know when I'm taking the a derivative, even a partial derivative, because the rules are the same as regular old derivatives, we just pop those constants that are being multiplied, the coefficients out in front, and then we concern ourselves only with taking the derivative of the expression that involves x. We'll come back for that constant later. Okay, and so we got y being multiplied by the result of our derivative. Well, the, the partial derivative with respect to x is take regular differentiation rules, derivative of e to the 2x power. Well, that's gonna be a little bit of chain rule action there. It's gonna be e to the 2x, e to the whatever is just has derivative e to the whatever times the derivative of the input there, so times two. And so that's how we arrive at this expression. Again, y is treated like a constant. If, it, if, it, if it's just, whoops, that's an awful elaborate partial. If it's just the partial of a y expression and we're taking the derivative with respect to x, the partial of something that only involves y, well, that's the, der the derivative of constant, so it's zero. But if it's y being multiplied by an expression involving x, we treat that y as a constant and just multiply it by the result of our actual derivative. Okay, similar to uh, regular old derivatives, if you will, um, single variable calculus, the partial rules or the derivative rules apply like you might expect. You have the standard, you can split up differentiation over sums. Uh, you have below that, you have the product rule where the derivative of two functions being multiplied together is the derivative of the first times the unchanged second plus the unchanged first times the derivative of the second. 
Um, you have your power rule as normal, you have your quotient rule as normal as well. So does the chain rule, it also applies to different partial derivatives, but just be careful about what is a variable and what we're treating as a constant. So the chain rule generically written as with generic input on the inside would be the derivative of the composite function f of g of whatever input stuff in this case is the derivative of the outside guy f primed evaluated at the unchanged inside guy g of stuff times the derivative of the inside guy g primed of stuff. So what does that mean? Well, we'll get to an example of it. But first, let's look at this. So, uh, more examples. Partials may be different. So we want to find both the x and the y partial of f, and we want to evaluate them. After we've found them in general, we want to evaluate both of them at the point for negative 5. So first, we'll deal with the partial with respect to x. So the partial of f with respect to x means take the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus 3xy plus y minus 1. Now, again, breaking up the derivative over individual terms, we have that second line down. And so, whoops, sorry about that. Partial with respect to x of x squared, well, that's the regular old derivative of x squared, so it's 2x. Now, here we have the partial uh, with respect to x of 3 times x times y. Well, 3 times x times y is. You can think of that as, uh, well, let's just go ahead and pop the, it's not technically factoring, but I'm going to call it factoring. Let's just sort of factor out the 3y times the derivative of now just x. And so 3y just stays out in front. The derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. And so that's why we have 3y times 1, which I wrote as this down here. And now for my last two terms, Red kind of means bad and stop. And so why are the partial with respect to x of y, why is it zero? Well, because y is a constant. And so looking over here on the right, partial with respect to x of any constant number one is going to be zero. Similarly, the partial with respect to x of y is going to be uh, zero as well. So that tidies up to see that our partial with respect to x is 2x plus 3y. So now if we were to evaluate that expression, again, kind of mixing notations here, I'm going to say, all right, so we're going to evaluate the partial with respect to x at the point 4, comma, negative 5. And I'm going to go ahead and write that. It, this step might be unnecessary, but I just kind of want to get you guys used to a notation that I like and I find helpful. Notice that this entire subscript here, this whole thing is a subscript to that little vertical bar showing that, hey, I want to take the expression 2x plus 3y and evaluate it at xy is equal to neg 4, negative 5. Was the xy equal to necessary? Nope but it may become helpful in future sections where we're evaluating the same expression over and over for different variables. So labeling the variables might be helpful. So I just decided to introduce it here. But plugging that in, you see we get negative seven. Okay, so we did the first part of the question. Let's try it with y. All right, so now the partial with respect to y. It looks like I made a mistake in my uh, typesetting of this. So forgive me there. Instead of lining everything up at the equals, we got it all lined up at the right, but it'll be okay. First step is to take the partial with respect to y to break up and take the partial derivative over the terms being added together. Now, partial with respect to y of x squared, that's a constant, right? Because we're taking the partial with respect to y and x doesn't have any y in it, so it's a constant, so that's gonna give us zero. Second expression, similar to the logic we did before, the partial with respect to y of 3xy. Well, the only thing that involves y is here, and the rest of the things are being multiplied, 3 and x. So I'm going to pull those out in front. We're going to take the derivative, partial derivative of y with respect to, of partial derivative with respect to y of y is just going to be 1. So that's where this 1 comes from. Uh, now, let's see partial derivative of y with respect to y. Well, we just said that's one, so that's going to give us this one here. And again, the partial derivative of any old constant is always going to be zero. So we see that the partial derivative of f with respect to y is uh, 3x plus 1. 
and evaluating that expression at the input of 4 comma negative 5 gives us 13. Summarize that all nicely. Okay, let's do an example. Let's get a little more complicated here. We've got some stuff going on here. Uh, product and chain rule example. So f is now y times, so I'm going to put a little red dot in here to emphasize, here's the product part of this example. We got y times sine of xy. And we want to find the partial with respect to x and the partial with respect to y. So first things first, uh, let me, OK. I'm doing something that uh, I like to do, and that's recklessly reuse variables here. Um, this f and kind of this f, those are generic f's. This is just writing the product and the uh, chain rules out with the generic variables f, f, and g. They are not the same as this, the f in the problem, OK? I hope that's not too confusing here. But so if we were to break this thing into a product rule, then the first function is f is going to be just y. And the second function is going to be sine of x, y there. And that's what I've got showing down here. And now later, we're going to see that we're going to need to apply this chain rule, but we're not there yet. So all right, so that gives us y. I'm breaking this up and saying, OK, the first thing I need to do is I need to do a product rule. Okay, so now take that product rule and expand that out. Okay, so the product rule applied to partials is going to be take the partial derivative with respect to x of the entire expression y times sine of xy. This is my f, this is my g. And so f primed is going to be the partial derivative of x with respect to y. That's going to be our f primed here. Unchanged g is just going to be unchanged g plus unchanged f. I'm going to run out of ways to write here times the derivative of g. So we use a dotted line there. It is the derivative, the partial derivative uh, of our second function. So now we got to do these calculations. Um, for the first one, the partial with respect to x of y, well, y is a constant, so we get zero. Uh, g is unchanged, so we just write that down. Now f is unchanged after the plus, so we just write that down. And now here we are. This rig right in here is going to require a chain rule. Why? Well, we have an outside function, sine, and then um, inside function, x times y. Chain rule. Think of it as the outside function and inside function. So. How do you do the chain rule? Well, you take the derivative of the outside function. Well, the outside function is our sine function. Let's get a different color. So the derivative of the outside function, sine. That's the derivative of sine here. The derivative of sine is cosine. What are we going to do? evaluate that at? We're going to evaluate that at the unchanged inside function, unchanged inside function. And so we're just going to slap an xy inside of that. And then onto that, you're going to multiply the derivative of the inside function. And so now we need to take the derivative with respect to x of our inside function xy. So everything else on the second line, um, well, the first off to the left, there you go, 0, right? 0 times anything is just 0, so that's a 0. Um, y, cosine xy, that all just drops down. And we see that, hey, what's the derivative with respect to x of the expression xy. Well, the y is a constant, a number. And so we just leave it alone. And the derivative of x is 1. And so we get 1y. Tidying all that jazz up, we end up with our final conclusion that the partial with respect to x of y times sine of xy is y squared times cosine of xy. So let's do better formatting this time. This time, let's do it with respect to y. And let's get that f in there where it needs to be. There we go. OK, so now partial with respect to y of this same expression. Similarly, we're going to do a product rule. Again, our f 
times g uh, when we're considering the product rule here are broken up like that. And so we're going to take the derivative of the first guy. That's this f primed times unchanged g times plus unchanged f prime the derivative of the second guy. So now evaluating these things, partial of y with respect to y is just one. Unchanged g is unchanged g, second expression, times unchanged first guy is unchanged first guy. Now again, we're going to need to apply a chain rule here. And so the chain rule, derivative of the outside guy evaluated at the unchanged inside times the derivative of the inside. So derivative of the outside guy is going to be the derivative of sine. So that's going to give us our cosine evaluated at the unchanged inside. It's going to give us cosine of xy here. And now times the derivative of the inside, that's going to be the partial with respect to y of our inside expression, xy. Similar to before, when we evaluate that, we are going to treat this x as a constant. So he's just going to hang out for the ride and take the derivative of y. And that's going to give us our 1 down here. And so we see that we have x times 1 for that expression. Tidying it all up, you get that the partial with respect to y of this function is sine of xy plus xy cosine of xy. All right, summarize it all up kind of nicely, but notice they were different. Okay, now we can do, we're not just stuck with first order derivatives with respect to partials. We can take second, third partials. Um, really what we're, we're only gonna get into the second order partial derivatives though. And here's where I wanna issue an extremely so, tr strong caution with notation. So for a continuous function, z is equal to f of x, y, the second order partial derivatives are the second order partial uh, of f with respect to x is going to be this. So what this notation on the left right here, this first one means is, I think, more clear if you break it up as taking the derivative of an already taken derivative. So taking a second derivative of something that's already a derivative. Um, we never write it this way, but uh, it'll help to explain the next bullet point. This could mean, means the same thing as this. And I think it's a little clearer to see that, okay, we're taking two derivatives. And first, we're going to take a derivative with respect to x. And then again, we're going to take our second derivative of, we're going to take the derivative of that already taken derivative function with respect to x. Um, subscript notation, well, the inside part of this parenthesis would be the partial with respect to x. The second part of this would be take the partial of that with respect to x, which we shorthand all together with this. Looks appealing, right? Here's where that be very, very careful with notation warning comes in. Notice here for the second bullet point that if you just look, y is before x, but oh no, x is before y here. So let's try and explain why that is the case. Okay, well, so in this expression, what's the first derivative that we're going to take? Well, we're going to take uh, the partial derivative of f with respect to x first, because that's on the right. You're thinking of that as we typically write inputs uh, to the right. And so this outer leftmost partial with respect to y is we're going to apply the we're going to take the partial with respect to y of a function that we've already taken the partial of with respect to x so it can be a little tricky there but if you really can wrap your head around the uh, what, this thinking of differentiation even partial differentiation as an operation on a function hopefully this input notation makes a little sense oftentimes this one makes a the subscript notation truly makes a little more sense and it's a little easier to grasp. But you just be careful between the two. They both have their time and place. So here, again, the innermost function is the derivative with respect to x. And the once we have that, we're going to take the derivative, the partial with respect to y there. And that's shorthanded up on the right as f subscript x, y. 
So the quick and dirty memory thing is uh, when you have subscripts, the X's and Y's are in the opposite order as when you're using differential notation. We're really understanding why and what they mean, the best way to do it. Okay. Similarly, you can take the partial of uh, partial derivative of X of the partial derivative with respect to Y. And that's notated like that. First taking the, the partial derivative of Y and then taking the partial with respect to X. And then similarly, you can take the second partial with respect to Y uh, this way. So now the top and the bottom one, they don't have any special names, but the middle two, these middle two where you take a partial of one variable and then take the partial derivative of that expression with respect to the other variable, those are called mixed partials. And that's important, we'll refer to them like that. So uh, I don't mind, uh, yeah, I really don't mind what notation you use, but just be careful to use it correctly. So let's do an example. Uh, F is the function x cosine of y plus y e raised to the x power. Find all the second partial derivatives. And in single variable calculus, that was a piece of cake. There was only one to find, but now we got four to find. So let's do it. First, before we take any second derivatives, we need first derivatives. So we need the partial with respect to x. Um, and that means that we're going to treat all y expressions as a constant. So when we're taking the partial with respect to x, x times cosine of y, cosine of y is a constant. Same thing as the derivative of seven x is seven times one. That's gonna be one times cosine of y. Again, when we take the derivative of the second expression, y is a constant. So y is just there, derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And that's why I have it in parentheses down there to emphasize that's the derivative. Yeah, so those parentheses show the derivative and the others are just constants being multiplied. It tidies up to the expression off to the right that you can see there. Now, the partial with respect to y. Again, the values in the parentheses are the actual derivatives being multiplied by their respective constants. Everything involving an x is going to be a constant. So x times cosine of y, x is the constant out in front. Leave it alone being multiplied. Derivative of cosine is negative sine of y, we see there. Um, uh, derivative of y e to the x with respect to y partial is going to be derivative of y is just one down there and e to the x is a constant. So we'll multiply that one times e to the x. Tidy that up, expression you see off to the right, negative x sine of y plus e to the x. Okay, so now we've, we've got those summarized. We can refer back to them. So we're gonna take the second partials. Now the notation I'm using is the differential one. So that's just gonna stick with that. So the second partial with respect to x is going to be the partial derivative with respect to x of the first partial with respect to x. Well, the first partial with respect to x is this. And we're going to take another partial with respect to x of that. Well, cosine of y is just a constant. So the derivative of the constant is going to be 0. So we're going to have 0 plus. And then the derivative of y times e to the x, y is a constant, so it's just going to stay there. And derivative of e to the x is just itself, and that's how we get e to the x. So I've got the first partial, or uh, the first second order derivative summarized up above there. Now it's time to do our first mixed partial. And again, be careful with notation here. Um, again, they're, they're both good, but just whichever one you use, stick to it. Uh, and get to know it, I tend to use the differential one. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the, der the partial derivative with respect to y of the partial with respect to x. Well, we know the partial with respect to x is up here. And so we're going to, to that expression, we're going to take the derivative with respect to y. So the derivative of cosine of y, that's negative sine of y, and the derivative of y times e to the x well, y is a constant, or I'm sorry, e to the x, anything involving x is constant, e to the x is constant. Derivative of y is just one. That's why we have just one times e to the x or e to the x. All right, our next sign, again, I added that above here. So our next partial is going to be the other mixed partial. This time, we're going to first take the partial with respect to y, and then of that expression, we're going to take its partial with respect to x. 
So I could add these little highlights here, probably would help a little bit. Whoops, let's do this right. Okay. Get the highlights on and then talk about them. There we are. Okay. So we can go ahead and we've already done the partial with respect to y. So we can just look that up up there. And then we're going to take that expression. We're going to take the second derivative uh, of it with respect to x. So looking at our expression, derivative of negative x is negative 1. That's just going to come right down here. And sine of y is a constant. So negative 1 times sine of y gives us negative sine of y. And now the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And that's how we get that result. Last but not least, it's time to take the second partial with respect to y. And so first, once again, we're going to take the partial with respect to y. And then we're going to take the partial with respect to y of that derivative. So uh, the partial with respect to y of the expression negative x sine of y. Negative x is a constant. Derivative of sine of y is cosine of y. So that goes there. Uh, derivative with respect to y, partial derivative with respect to y of e to the x is 0 because e to the x doesn't have any y expression in it. So it's just derivative of a constant is 0. And so we summarize things up here. And if you're, if you're, I don't know, if you just happen to notice something, check this out. Our mixed partials in this case were equal, and that's not totally a coincidence here. So let's let's keep going. If you notice that the mixed partials were equal in the last example, it wasn't a coincidence. Right, look at me foreshadowing the next uh, slide. So if f is a continuous function, then the mixed partials for f will be equal. So continuity implies equality of mixed partials, uh, not the other way around. If you have mixed partials being equal, it does not give you continuity. But... So yeah, small caution. The other way around does not give you continuity. That was, this was a terrible typesetting decision. Let's, let's, you know what? Let's say does not imply. There we go. Okay, that's better. All right, and that uh, covers our discussion of partial derivatives.